So hydrotherapy, uh, theory and practice, part 21. We'll be continuing on with, uh, with the various aspects of this modality of treatment. So just remember that you want to partner with a healthcare practitioner that shares a similar philosophy of care that you do. And <clears throat> that way, when you are working on different aspects of care, uh, that uh, you are in, in agreement on that. Just different tools in the, in the toolbox that you can, can, you, can use. Just uh, think of these things as additional aspects of ways to help keep yourself well, as well as treat yourself when you're sick. And uh, any kind of modality that comes your way or medication or treatment should be checked out and do your own due diligence. Don't blindly accept it without doing that. In January 1903, <clears throat> Thomas Edison made the statement or was quoted as having said the doctor future won't be giving medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame in diet and in the cause and prevention of disease. Very forward thought for his time. He must have known uh, one of the early pioneers in those ideas. And that was in 1885, it was stated by uh, the Lord's messenger that there are many ways of practicing the healing art, but there's only one way that heaven approves. And that's using God's remedies uh, of the simple agencies of nature. They're not taxing or debilitating to the system uh, through their powerful properties. So pure air is a very powerful property. Uh, water is a powerful property. Cleanliness, just being clean, a proper diet. Purity of life is good for the soul. And a firm trust in God anchors it all. So these are remedies, the want of which for thousands are dying, but they're going out of date because they take time to implement and time to learn and apply. <clears throat> so essentially using air, exercise, pure water, clean uh, uh, areas that we live in, they're within the reach of everybody without a lot of outlay of expense. <clears throat> so they're not taxing on the system of the body either. In 3 John 1 verse 2, uh, stated that, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So we want to be sure that we take care of our soul and then also take care of our health and other aspects. Romans 12, 1 and 2, we're admonished to uh, present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. It's our reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable perfect will of God. <clears throat> And as we come to this knowledge of the fact that we're fearfully and wonderfully made in the ministry of healing, uh, it's stated that we should make our physiology, our bodies, our study so that we can understand it and understand the way others might work as well uh, so that we can preserve it and protect it from harm and defilement. <clears throat> so to that end, we're continuing our journey through hydrotherapy uh, implementation and practice. So tonight we're going to begin looking at a variety of different tonic frictions. So a tonic, again, is just a term for something that tends towards health. So tonic drinks, and this is a tonic activity, uh, uh, stimulation. So things that are tonic tend towards the body's ability to heal itself and towards health. So cold, cold water treatments along with friction rubs, so a vigorous body rub, and it increases uh, circulation. So there's a variety of different cold treatments using water and friction combined, and it increases the body's ability to heat itself on its own. So it's it's true that, for example, taking a, hot, a contrast shower, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, uh, even though you end on cold, you actually end up causing the body to warm itself. And you'll have end up with a thermal, a thermal benefit uh, from that, even though you end on cold. So the friction and cold will not only increase the circulation, but that increased circulation will help keep you warm. So they basically move in several different directions. We're going to move through these uh, different types of tonic frictions. The most basic is the wet hand rub. And then there's the cold mitten rub, the cold towel rub. And each one is becoming more and more vigorous and having a, a more pronounced uh, effect on the body. The wet sheet rub, the dripping sheet rub, and an ice rub. And basically, you'd also follow this kind of pathway with someone who might be in a in an affirmed situation weak and not able to withstand things you would do the wet hand rub that's the most basic and, and easy to tolerate up to the ice rub someone who would be already in a pretty vigorous situation 
with their health, they may have some things where they need to have some circulation increase, but they'd be able to tolerate that intense uh, cold and friction. So there's also the salt glow rub, and we'll uh, address that later on, but it, it's often used with cold mitten rubs if their reactions are minimal. So if there isn't a, a good reaction to the cold mitten rub, they can increase the reaction by in, including the salt glow aspect of it. So the diagram here is from a textbook of hydrotherapy doing the cold towel rub and treating the back with, with that cold towel rub in this situation. So benefits of friction hydrotherapy, they uh, systemically stimulate the body and there's several different things that work together to stimulate the circulation. Uh, the type of friction that's used, how vigorous it's applied. So you can be gentle with it or you can be more um, intense with the friction and the pressure that's applied. And then the, the body's ability uh, to react to the cold. So the reaction that's associated with the body's reaction. So you can see the circulatory system there in the upper picture. Some uh, beneficial circulatory system increases, it stimulates the circulation, it's essentially the, the vasoconstriction, vasodilation of the, of the blood vessels, arteries and veins. And remember that the arteries carry blood away from the heart, the veins bring the blood back to the heart. <clears throat> it increases muscle tone and activity. So that's, that's a good thing. So it increases the blood supply to and from the muscles. And then also increases nerve tone and sensitivity. The lower picture is a, a, a nerve net. The larger portion there is the cell body or the soma of the nerve and the nucleus is there and those projections or the dendrites, which are the, the sensory perception and uh, interneural connections between adjacent nerves happen there. So it depends on where those nerves are actually growing if they're in a white matter mass like in the brain or spinal column, or if they're in the periphery uh, as far as like touch, touch or skin surface sensations of heat and cold and pressure. So some other benefits of, of a friction hydrotherapy application, it stimulates muscular activity. So up here you can see the, the breakdown of a muscle from the bicep uh, all the way down to its smallest subunits of the actin and myosin fibers in the upper right-hand corner that walk back and forth over each other, micro distances. But when all these thousands and thousands of micro distances work together, they create the large muscle movement we see in a limb being able to move from extension to flexion, complete flexion, and then the power associated with that. Uh, it upregulates glandular function. So if someone has some sluggish gland activity, uh, pancreas, uh, thyroid, other glands, they can help to stimulate and upregulate that glandular activity function. And it increases internal organ activity. Basically, it's going to be reducing congestion, blood congestion. So when blood becomes stagnant or doesn't flow well in a given system or organ or region of the body that can tend towards a disease state because essentially you're not bringing in oxygenated blood, you're not carrying away the metabolic byproducts and toxins from the activity. So increasing that activity and the circulation just helps bring a tonic effect, a, a health in improving uh, effect to those organs. So what does increased heat production benefit? So part of the, the benefit of this is the increased body's ability to produce heat. It aids in the process of phagocytosis. Phagy is to eat, cytosis is cells. So essentially they're the garbage collection system of the body. You can see a picture of uh, phagocytosis taking place. The large gray structure is the phagocyte, which is a, a, a cell, that immune system cell that's eating some, in this case, a bacterium. It could be something else as well. It encapsulates that, brings it inside. There are lysosomes. Lys means to break, and it dissolves and breaks those apart and breaks them down, and then essentially releases those, those inactivated components back into the, to the circulatory system, and then those are going to be moved out and filtered through the lymphatic system, through the kidneys, and essentially then released uh, or recycled. It also, heat production produces bactericidal antibodies. So this is in conjunction with infectious fever, fevers, um, increases oxidation and elimination of the toxins and bacteria. So bacterial byproducts and bacterial toxins, the bacteria themselves 
may not necessarily be toxic, but if there happens to be the conditions that accelerate an overabundance of them, their metabolic byproducts, the waste products of their metabolism can actually be toxic. And that is the underlying basis of, of some disease conditions are actually the toxins, not the bacteria themselves. And then of course, when the bacteria is eliminated, then the toxin clears, um, but it's actually not the bacteria itself that's causing the problem, it's their metabolic byproducts. <clears throat> So it helps to build general body resistance, improves circulation and strength, and uh, the endurance endurance is improved through the benefits of uh, friction. helps to uh, helps with low blood pressure to bring it up into a more stable range, and improves the body's ability to fight off colds and flu. This is a well documented aspect of cold friction or cold therapy application. <clears throat> Uh, my wife was in a study as a student uh, during her, her medical training, physical therapy training, hot and cold showers, contrast showers, and they were measurably able to measure the uh, increased white blood, blood cell activity following tonic contrast showers. Uh, so it's actually a measurable benefit associated with that kind of therapy. And we see that similar kind of a therapy or benefit from the cold mitten and other cold friction applications. So some basic things to have on hand, some supplies. You wanna have several of each of these items available uh, so that you can use them as needed and, and not be hunting for, for more in a hurry. So wash basins or small tubs of, of water, uh, one to three pails or buckets. So it may not need five gallon buckets, but you can certainly use that size uh, well. You can stick your whole you know, your whole leg up to your knee, practically in a five gallon bucket, so that's a good size. Uh, some cold uh, or ice water that can increase the effects of the application. If you don't have ice and you have access to cold stream water or well water that's been run just right out of the ground, that's gonna be very cold as well, so you can use that. Depending on where you are, you could use ice or snow from the exterior environment from outside. And then salt can also increase that effect um, as we see with the salt glow. <clears throat> One to three bed sheets. So these would be large, large sheets that would go over a bed. Uh, One to two small washcloths or friction mitts. So on the right there, you can see some multicolored uh, friction mitts made of a Turkish towel. You can make your own mitts as well as you can purchase mitts. Notice that they don't have a thumb. You can have a thumb or not have a thumb depending on how you'd like to use it. Uh, you want to have plastic sheeting available to cover the bed. That basically just keeps it from, from getting soiled or wet from the hydrotherapy treatments and then toweling for that as well. <clears throat> so if it's done on an individual um, in the bed, you definitely want that plastic sheeting and the, and the toweling to help protect those areas. You can also do these applications to a person who is sitting or um, even standing in some cases. Some people actually do that to, do that to themselves on a daily basis. So a warm, dry towel is, is the best way to finish. So once they have gone through the treatment, have a warm, dry towel ready to dry off and uh, make sure that they don't have evaporative cooling take place to lead to shivering or chilling. You don't want to be chilled after any hydrotherapy treatment. So it's nice to have a, a thermally stable room that is warm enough without drafts so that there isn't a chance of, of having any benefit uh, negated through chilling. So we're gonna start with the cold mitten friction and then we're gonna go into the, the wet hand friction. Even though the, the cold mitten friction is the second on the list, the wet hand friction uh, has similar basic steps, although done slightly different. So you're not using the cold mitten, uh, but uh, the protocols refer to the, the basic steps. So. The most common tonic friction is the cold mitten friction, and it helps the body maintain and tend towards a healthy status, essentially because it's increasing the flow of the circulatory system, improving the oxygen saturation of the tissues, and improving the removal of metabolic byproducts and toxins. So two washcloths or friction mitts uh, that you can use on the skin. So some, the supplies you'd use for both the wet hand and the cold mitten are gonna be a pail or wash bowl of ice water, 50 to 60 degrees. So not necessarily freezing like 32, but definitely cool. Um, a sheet, uh, three Turkish towels, 
two friction mitts or washcloths. So there's a mitten pattern there that you could use to make your own if you didn't have a purchased one. You could also use the, the, the wa just plain washcloths, but if you're doing a fair number of these uh, mitten frictions, one of the mitten type of applications is much more efficient than trying to hang onto a washcloth that can kind of change positions on you. Uh, so something to kind of think about as far as investing in some tools. <clears throat> So wet compresses to head the neck. If the person has a fever or is ill, you want to have uh, some wet compresses to help cool the head area down. And then the plastic sheeting to go over the blanket uh, and blanket to go over the bed. <clears throat> so that's going to be, those are going to be true for both the wet hand friction and the cold mitten friction applications. So applying the, the wet uh, or the, the, the mitten friction, you're going to be, again, using a draft-free warm room. Um, if the individual is ill with a fever, just make sure you help keep them cool. Because remember, the overall effect is going to be a heating effect. So you don't want them to overheat. Uh, so cooling them with a wet, cold compress on their face and neck is a good way to start. If they happen to have some kind of heart disease, heart valve, you're going to place a cold pack over the heart before you begin the application. It can be given standing. Uh, some people do this to themselves uh, on, on a daily basis. Just have a, a cold mitten friction and, and rub it up and down on your arms and around your body. Uh, not in the not in a shower, just put standing in a in a in a room or a warm room. So wring those cold wet raw claws dry and then quickly quickly rub the area that's being uh, applied. Dry it and then re-drip and wring the cloth rub, dry, dip, and ring. So you're gonna be doing that sequence over and over uh, uh, as you move around the body. So you're gonna move around the body in a sequential uh, method. So arms and forearms on one side, rub until the skin is pink. This will be just a few seconds, then dry it and cover it. So you're gonna dry it, cover it to keep it uh, from having drafts or chilling, then go to the other arm. So the next arm and forearm, you're gonna rub it, uh, and you're going to dry it, you're going to redrip your cloth, wring it out, you're going to cover up that limb, and you're going to move to the chest, and then the trunk, thighs and legs. Each time you're going to be doing a quick rub till the skin's pink, dry it, redip the, the re -dip and wring the rag, and then on to the next area. So you're going to be doing this uh, in a very efficient and methodical manner, uh, so that you're going to cover the area in a, in a, um, succinct amount of time and then cover the areas so they don't get chilled and, and maintain their warmth as the body's warming effect happens in those given regions as, as they're finished. So some variables that can uh, just benefit and bolster the effects, the water temperature, the colder the water, the more intense the reaction will be. Uh, and so that's going to be variable on what coldness of water you can actually attain. It's also going to be a variable based on the individual's ability to tolerate that. If you have a very weak invalid type of a person that doesn't have much strength or energy, you're not going to want to do as cold or intense an application. Someone who's more robust, uh, then you can do a colder uh, intensity. The frequency of dipping. <clears throat> And that's going to be directly in conjunction with the amount of water left in the cloth. So the frequency of dipping, you're going to have a colder cloth being uh, friction rubbed uh, in, if the frequency is, is closer together. Uh, and the amount of water that's left in, there's going to be more evaporative cooling and a, a cooler tonic effect with more water in the, in the rag. And then, of course, the pressure that's applied and the intensity and frequency of the area that's, that's being rubbed. So those are some variables that can enhance the benefits or the reaction that's associated with the cold mitten friction application. So we'll, we'll kind of step back now to the wet hand rub. This is the mildest friction type. So we went through the wet mitten, the cold mitten friction first, uh, essentially because the, the supplies and steps were outlined for that uh, initially. <clears throat> but this is the one you're going to use on, on the weakest individuals. It's not something that's used as often uh, because it is so mild, but it can have an effect that will be adequate for someone who is, has a lack of energy or malaise uh, or just very, very weak. Uh, <clears throat> so someone who isn't able to undergo the more intense treatments that we talked about. So essentially the same application method as far as going over the, the, the different parts of the body in sequence. <clears throat> 
but you're not using a, a mitten of Turkish towel. You can just be using your hands that have water. You can just dip them in a cool basin and then you're gonna be rubbing with the hands. Dip the hands in the cold water. You're gonna be only one exposed region of the body at a time. So arm and forearm, rub, dry, uh, cover, and then go to the next area. Rub, dry, cover. So you're gonna be doing that uh, sequentially uh, through the different regions of the body to stimulate the whole, the whole system. If you're just focusing on one area, you can just also do one area. It doesn't have to be systemically necessarily. So just a, a reminder that you can go and review uh, these various uh, procedures and, and therapy modalities at preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com and also find other articles and presentations on sustainable gardening, homestead remedies and the like, as well as spiritual messages uh, concerning Earth's final warning.